Welcome to this episode of Gideon's War on Crunch. Today I have with me Maria Gudmundsdottir. Yep. Is that correct? That's correct. Gudmundsdottir, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Um, I, I think I have maybe a little bit of a chance to not butcher it too much because of my Danish background, but uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's still difficult for me. Uh, Maria is the CEO and founder of Parity, which is a game development studio out of Iceland. But maybe you could elaborate a little bit more what Parity is all about and what you're working on. Uh, yes, I founded Parity in, in 2017 here in Iceland with like the main goal of increasing diversity and inclusion in the industry. I didn't have a clear picture like what game we were going to do or I just had this kind of a long term mission of uh, uh, for the for the studio specifically. But through brainstorming session with uh, other women, I, I landed on a, a, a game that uh, is uh, in development still, but coming out soon called Island of Winds. It's a story driven adventure game inspired by 17th century Iceland because we really didn't want to uh, even though Norse mythology is, you know, uh, came from Iceland and the Vikings as well, we just like thought like, okay, no Vikings, no Norse mythology, and uh, do something totally different uh, with Island of Winds. Yeah. Mm. So who are we following on in this journey of the Islands of the Winds? Uh, the main character is Brynhildur. Uh, she comes back to uh, her uh, island after a not so long journey and find her clan missing and she goes on a journey to find her clan but clan but it's also her personal journey journey of coming in terms with her past as well mm. and it is a it was a really brutal time in uh, Iceland you know in the 16th 17th and 18th century because we changed from catholic to lutheran religion and uh, people mm. were just like being drowned if they had babies out of wedlock and stuff like that. So that's an underlying, even though the the game is all about healing and helping, but it's also about, you know, uh, her personal journey, which is a little bit dark, uh, you know, yeah. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so c could you say that in a way the game is really aligning with the mission and the idea that you have when you create a parity with the diversity and the inclusion and, and everything? Yeah, yeah, we can always do better, yeah, I know, but uh, because it is a single player, the, the diversity of characters and things like that are not that much in this first uh, version. Of course. Uh, but uh, yeah, we were thinking like also like uh, 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 in, in games and also in movies that you see this kind of a coming of age women that are like, like can do everything or you see this old mm. uh, uh, woman who you know is really really wise about mm. uh stuff but then you know when you have uh women from 20 to 40 they're just like you know sex bombs or something like that so we wanted to have like mm. a character in the game that is like in you know like not 15 and not you know 70 but like in this kind of a uh, area without being yeah a sex bomb in a way so uh that was like uh, we wanted to have a character that we mirror us more to in in the game. So that is ha helping away, yeah. And we are also thinking like, of course, we are set in Iceland in a, yeah, uh, you know, it, it it is a fantasy world even though it's inspired by Iceland. So, yeah. So we have tried to get like more diverse characters in, and uh, and of course the personality of characters is that we don't want the the evil guy in the game to be totally evil, you know, it has, you know, he has this kind of a, a background as mm. well, you know, so it's a, yeah, so we uh, put a lot of effort in uh, the characters in the games and their backstories. I can, I can only imagine how complex that also might make the player feel as uh, you're kind of finding relatability to both of these characters. So even if it's the villain, you still find you can connect somehow to it and yeah. that turns you in, in one way or another. Mm -hmm. Very cool. I'm, I'm excited to play it when it gets out for sure and, and try to play around with that. So I want to maybe zoom into the idea of diversity in general. And, um, mm -hmm. and this podcast is a lot about uh, thriving in games in general and, and diversity is definitely one aspect of that. Mm -hmm. So what what's your 
idea of how we can make the games industry maybe more diverse and and what are some things that you have tackled to to include it in your own studio uh, hiring is one thing of course but yeah yeah one thing is like it is of course the human factor in, in building a game is so important of course you have this individual who can make game on their own from a to z but normally it is a team of 10 to like 500 so uh, mm. uh, working together is like really important to make the product you know solid and good and you know and everybody has a, a uh, same goal to go to and they understand the vision the, that we are aiming for and uh, for that uh, uh, I've tried to yeah, you know have like balance in like veterans versus newcomers and uh, in, in, in gender and also in like the background in the uh, like where people are coming from, like, oh, have they studied something more than just computer science? Did they, you know, learn music? Were they in like, did they take like some uh, actors lessons uh, while they were in, you know, when they were 18 years old or where, uh, where, uh, where is their mind? You know, is it like, mm. you know, can they do many things or, 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 or open to like new things to do? And, you know, when you are a small studio, it's really important that you, you have people that want to do more thing or have like inspired to uh, 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 yeah, do more than one thing. Yeah, it's, uh, that is really, you know, I look really at that, not like, oh, you have a master's degree in this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm more like, oh, you did like one class in dancing class here. You yeah, know, I saw that and you, you know, because your interest that brings, hmm. you know, your interest and in working with others uh, uh, that defines the studio as well. Yeah. Okay, cool. So if I'm understanding correctly, you're not just looking at the diversity of gender or color or uh, the different uh, areas of the world that people come from, but more also what are their diverse interests that they bring to the table before yeah. coming into a game to mm -hmm. create a unique mix. And I, I find that very interesting. It's, it's maybe a unique approach to it, and I would really love to see how that goes. Yeah. And because uh, I mean, of that, you get people from abroad in as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, so the culture yeah. attracts the yeah. same kind of people? Yeah. It, yeah, no, it, yeah, yeah, from, uh, yeah, it does like, yeah, yeah, you're open to uh, you know, getting more people in and then they see that and they, you know, like it. So it's, yeah. But still, we don't okay. have many people abroad. You know, we have people working in our studios, uh, you know, in, in France and uh, in the UK. But of course, when we go bigger and the game is out, you know, I, I, I would want to see more diversity in my team you know? <laughs> even more diversity yeah. i guess with the uh yeah. the new effects of remote work being so widely accepted it's it's yeah. even easier to get a diverse mix into your team mm -hmm. maria tell us a little bit about your background before you started parity where uh where did you come from what was your unique mix in a way so people can start to understand what kind of person you are yeah, I'm a, uh, I'm a, like an A student, you know, from like six year old to, you know, 19 year old kind of a, always did well in everything in mathematics and in like languages and, and stuff like that. Uh, but and like I'm a really, I've always been ambitious of doing things, but my self esteem was like lower than my ambition. So at like mm. 19 years old, I was like, what to do with my life? Uh, and uh, I decided to study uh, uh, Russian language. Uh, oh, so wow. I have a BS degree in Russian. I, uh, I lived in St. Petersburg from 97 to 98. Uh, it was a really, yeah, I was uh, 22 years old. It was a really good experience for me, you know, to go to, a, of course, the collapse of the Soviet Union had like just been like few years earlier. Uh, so they had McDonald's though. They had <laughs> McDonald's had to you know, come in there. But uh, yeah, it was, uh, uh, and I fell just in uh, love with St. Petersburg. It was uh, yeah, a really lovely time. Uh, but when I came back, uh, uh, I was just like, what to do next? And uh, I decided to study computer science. Uh, after mm. that, so it's like my brain has been split into like this artistic 
part and then the you know logic uh, analytic part uh, and uh, uh, while I was studying the computer science, I uh, applied for a job as a quality assurance at a company called CCP here in Iceland. Mm. I had no idea what the quality assurance was or like a tester or whatever. And uh, <laughs> that took a journey of 12 years at CCP doing, yeah, you know, uh, went from quality assurance to game design to management and then to production. And uh, while I was, uh, and I, uh, moved to Shanghai, where they were on a first person shooter called Dust 514 that they did uh, also. But when I came back from Shanghai back to Iceland, it felt like going back to the past, uh, yeah, you know, a little bit in a company. So uh, I wanted to try something, you know, new. Uh, and I uh, had this like brewing in my like, oh, you know, should I do a, I wanted to, you know, form my own company, but I had like gotten a little bit tired of. The, you know the gaming industry I, I felt I felt always like an outsider in a way because mm. I didn't uh, you know my, I played computer games on my uncle's computers because uh, you know that's how it was market you know <laughs> while everybody was getting single, single spectrum I didn't get that you know so it was felt like okay I didn't play that game I didn't play you know it's like this kind of a you always think you know because you didn't play as many games that you you know can't be in the video game industry in a way it's like a, a uh, but I, so uh, I left CCP and uh, I went to work for another company, like a similar old company here in Iceland that was doing like software uh, solutions for lotteries. And I was I had to mm. make the, the game department for, for there uh, and um, uh, did some innovation there and uh, I had that. But while I was there, there were uh, girls that came to visit from the computer science department in the university. And I asked them how many of them are gamers and like one mm. raised their hand like half and one, one, you know, raised it really high. And uh, when I started talking to them, they're like, oh, yeah, I played that game. I played that game. And, you know, like, yeah, I don't relate to the, you know, that company because I think, you know, the game is not relatable. I'm like, I'm sitting here with like 14 years of experience. Yeah, you know, I just have to do something about it. So uh, that was an inspiration of like uh, uh, founding parody is like seeing like uh, people have to mirror themselves a little bit in, you mm. know, in the games they want to play, if, you know, if they want to join the industry as well. So, uh, yeah, so that gave me the idea to, you know, come back to the video game industry again and, um, and found the company. Do you, do you find that it is easier for women these days to identify with the, the, the term gamer in a way? Because what I'm hearing you say is that they couldn't really identify with the games and the industry yeah. maybe at large. Do you find that yeah. it's more easy these days? I, I, I find it still difficult to call myself a gamer. <laughs> you know, it's mm. like, a, yeah, I know. And we all, all, you know, have this pre now I'm like, girl engineer, girl doctor, you know, women doctor, or, or, you know, you have to like identify the gender there, but you just say a doctor if it's like a, yeah. So, uh, you know, the world girl gamer and the casual gamer and, uh, uh, it's because, uh, uh, the one that play game six hours a day in, in, in a hardcore, you know, multiplayer community, they own the mm. world a little bit. So it's like, a yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know because uh, probably, but yeah, I'm an older generation, but I hope that, uh, you know, people that are 15 years today, 15 years old today, you know, can identify with a, you know, a gamer, the word gamer. I, I think that there might even be like a, an overlap there, right? That, uh, maybe the way that the industry has been going before in, in terms of the, the games and how they're portrayed and the term gamer has been maybe leaning towards the hardcore gamer type person, mm -hmm. man, boy, whatever that sits in this basement and plays really hardcore, right? And and by creating studios like yourself, where you're creating more diversity, I, I think the, the flavor of the thing that you're playing has a completely different texture and context. So it maybe might become easier over the long run, I would hope for people to also enter into the industry because of these games that are feeling more relatable to different kinds of, of um, people broadly. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that and, uh, you know, when I, I was just like 
there are no games for me. Yeah, I know in a way. But uh, uh, when I uh, started like browsing what kind of game I want, and I found like just like in a few hours, I found like game that I loved. So uh, there is, uh, you know, even for me that has been working in the game industry, I'm still like a little bit narrow. Uh, narrow. I had to open my mind like there is a lot of like uh, uh, mm. games out there. And of, of course, uh, for this, uh, game engines like Unity and Unreal have of course helped a lot uh, mm. in, in development and in, in, in increasing uh, games on the market so that it becomes also I find also the mindset at least here in Iceland is that they don't understand how crucial media this is you know it is yeah. like uh, you know we have we uh, we proud ourselves here in Iceland, like everyone is a writer here, you know, everybody has a like book, you know, near, you know, writing a book or, or you know, a, a poem or whatever here in Iceland. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know, get this also in the video game industry, you know, use that mm. like a creative power of the volcano energy here in Iceland and use this media as much as uh, we have been, <laughs> you know, uh, using the, the book here. So uh, I've been telling, you know, people here and uh, <laughs> about that, that you, you know, you can tell stories through this uh, new medium. Mm-hmm. Iceland 2.0, everyone's a video game developer. Yeah, yeah that's my, that's <laughs> my vision. Is, <laughs> yeah, I guess it, it'll, it'll definitely be much more easy in the future to mm-hmm. get going in games in a way, even though you don't have a, a computer science background. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I want to maybe double click more about the time at CCP as it relates to mental health and, and reaching deadlines, etc. Have you found it to be rather easy? And I don't want to specifically talk about CCP, more your experience working in games and how it's transpired with the mental health aspect. So well-being balanced to the deadlines mm-hmm. that need to be met. Yeah, it was, you know, we crunched a lot, and but mm. it you know, it was not like for a long period, you know, sometimes it was for like a long period of time, but uh, in the end became, you know, shorter. But uh, that was like many, many years ago. It's not like that today. But uh, uh, I found also because we had like a deadline every six months, you know, you uh, uh, worked really hard like the two months before and then the two months Mm. after you were like drained. So mm. then, then for two months, you were like, yeah, 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 on the balance of like eight hour. And then you were like crunched up. So in the end, the work that was made in the six months was similar. Yeah, you know, because you were mm. like, because the time of the, of the crunch was so long, it like, you know, lowered the productivity. Uh, yeah, in a way. So uh, for me, uh, I, okay, uh, interesting. During, during that time, I didn't have kids. So uh, it didn't like affect me. I was just like, oh, I have more money or whatever. And uh, so mentally it was okay. But looking back at it, I'm like, wow, how the productivity, you know, dropped, you know, you, you know, and for the whole team, you know, I, for me, I experienced that, like everybody's just like, you know, getting longer coffee breaks. And, you know, so it's like, a, did have that effect. But the rush of getting something out, like in a hard deadline, that is also like, wow, you like, uh, yeah, mm. no, that is also good, you know, in a way. So yeah i see okay so i guess this brings me to a follow-up question so what i'm hearing you say is that there has been a really interesting aspect to crunching in that intense period of time where you're feeling like you're really you're turning up all the creative dials and the productive dials to really get Mm -hmm. this thing shipped that you're trying to create but it had the negative downside of of needing rest times after because you're kind of burning yourself out yeah. creating a cycle that's maybe not as sustainable as you would help. And and I think there there might be a point to having intensive periods every now and then if you have the right repercussions to move into a resting phase or like a slow phase, as you said, would come two months after, right? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I was just saying like uh, uh, some study have shown like uh, you can keep productivity for two weeks, not like two mm. months like we did, you mm. know, <laughs> you know, you can, you know, do it like really, uh, you know, then the productivity. Yeah, maybe a new study have shown something else, but uh, at least I read about it like, you know, so you can have like a two weeks of the team like, wow, 
or else you know the productivity stops drops dropping down so even mm. though we had this kind of long crunch period it's uh it probably has had an effect on on the productivity oh for sure mm-hmm. um there, there's all sorts of cascading effects that you're not noticing when you're working this intensely uh yeah. you might remember yourself that maybe some nutritional choices are not the right ones uh you're not seeing your friends as much so you're not feeling as much support for your mental well-being you're not getting as good quality sleep because you're working in front of a screen for too long etc cetera, etc cetera. Yeah. so absolutely it will have a effect over time that will drain you out how have you seen the transition happening or what is what is occurring in parity in a way that you're you're managing the sometimes intensive periods that need to be done versus the uh the more long haul steady productivity in a way what what have you implemented well we uh have done like many other companies companies in the industry we're using like scrum agile uh, development which you know uh, some go like 100 percent like this is the uh, this is the book about scrum or whatever but what i have uh, uh, seen from it is that the team chooses the task that they create can create within like two weeks time they set mm-hmm. like the hours of how much it will take and uh uh, and then there is like daily meetings and daily updates that take, you yeah, know, uh, um, uh, that, uh, you know, we talk about if there are any blockers, have something changed from yesterday and stuff like that. Uh, and then there is one thing that was, uh, oh, after working in like a waterfall, like, uh, area, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, product management in, in CCP. Uh, there was a really good change with Scrum is that you have people in different departments sitting together. So, uh, hmm. like I was, uh, I started in quality assurance. Then you had to wait like for everything, you know, from from game design to pro- programming to get the, you know, and then our period was like really long at the end before release, you know, and hmm. we were just waiting for a period of time to get like a, a, a lot uh-huh. to do. And yeah. uh, then I went into game design and I was like making missions in, in E online like for a month and I'm like, wow, you know, wrote the stuff and like ever. And then I went like a month later to the program and it's like, that is not doable. You know, we don't have <laughs> a game mechanic for that. We don't like that. And like 80% of the work that I had did for a month just went down the drain. So uh, for me to have this kind of a daily talk about, like, is this doable? Can we do that? Da, 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 that, uh, I think that has changed uh, uh, a lot and uh, making people more, uh, if you tackle issue right away, you can keep, mm. you know, the, the working hour from nine to five much, much better, mm. you know, so. Mm. Okay. What, what I'm hearing you say is by having a feedback loop that's occurring on a regular basis, you're minimizing the amount of error that is occurring down the road. So there's not a lot of redundant work that needs to be redone at the end. Yep. Is that right? Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, and I, I guess I want to sprinkle my own 10 cents on there as well. Is um, If you have so much feedback, it's automatically increasing the rate of communication in the team. And having this feedback is going to allow for group flow, which can increase productivity insanely. So I really want to commend you for, for implementing something like this. And I guess it's also a result of the diversity culture that you've built that there are so many different angles. And, and as a result of that, the people need to mix and mingle to, to create something really unique, yeah. right? Yeah, mm. absolutely. Yeah, and it's like, like uh, always listen to, you know, I come up with an idea and then now goes like, oh, but you haven't thought about that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, mm. yeah, I forgot. That will create, a, you know, 10 bucks more. Okay, let's like, you know, backfire on that. And uh, yeah, so yeah, having great ideas can cost a lot, you know, <laughs> you mm. know, you have to like, you know, have an actionable from that idea and make sure, you know, down the road, it's like, you know, doable. Mm. So how are you balancing this at Parity where oh, obviously there's a lot of communication and there might some, be some agile changes that you can really leverage because you're a smaller team. But um, 
how are you making sure that you're still kind of keeping track? Because that's the other side, right? That you might have a lot of feedback, but it also might create more work in the end that that's maybe not been planned in for the schedule. Yeah, we, of course, uh, just use a product management tool, you know, for that mm. and we keep up with the data. And, you know, if we see like, uh, so uh, uh, if we see a trend from a, one person who's doing like less of work. It's not like I don't do micromanagement, you know, it's like you are accountable to deliver your work. Uh, mm. But uh, of course, we have to like make sure when you have like a backlog of, of things that needs to be done. Uh, you know, you have to make sure that everybody is giving their like 100% that they can uh, uh, give to the team. And, uh, mm. and then it's also about of course, there is this kind of a velocity of people that people have different velocity. Some people yeah. have more, uh, have to take more into the, the meetings. So they have like different velocity than others. And, uh, and also people that uh, try to uh, uh, catch all the balls, uh, you know, what, you know, I don't know the terminology in English, <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, it's a, you know, try to, if something comes up during the day, they try to tackle it. Yeah, I know, mm. while others just like sit and do what exactly they planned for the day. Mm -hmm. So you have to take that into a, you know, into a, a account as well. Yeah, but uh, of course data, we just use data to, uh, you know, see as well. Okay, so the main measurement point is kind of data. They, what kind of data is this data of um, measurability of the audience or is it data of where you want to go or just data as a measurement or what are we talking about here? Yeah, it's just like uh, uh, data of, you know, we call it like user stories, you know, say mm. like we want this character to be able to do A, B and C in the game and uh, that requires like programming, animation, game design or whatever and then we like, we're not looking at like Game designer A did like 78 hours, 0.7, you know, that is good or bad. It's more like a, a, like doing a character like this takes us as a team three and a half months. And, you know, yeah. can we lower that to two and a half months or can we like, you know, learn from that? Uh, yeah. So uh, that's the data we use. Like how does it, how long do it, does it take to get an end boss into the game? to a new level in the environment and uh, uh, that kind of, uh, yeah. Hmm. I, I, I kind of want to move over to mental health a little bit. And yeah. I, I'm, I'm really wondering, I think I have this idea that Icelandics have a really unique take on what mental health means and how they tackle it. And, and I understand that you might have some people not working in Iceland, but nonetheless, the culture of, of Iceland will trickle through in the studio, I'm sure. So how, how are you tackling mental health within Parity? How are you tackling it in the team? What kind of challenges do you see happening and occurring? Well, uh, when you are a small startup with uh, 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 small funding as well, it has like mm. a mental impact on the team. Like you don't have mm. like a secure job for the next five years. Mm. And uh, for me, I would like to, you know, tackle that better but of course uh, uh, we are a small team so uh, it's one-on-one -on -one interview and you know like being also transparent about like on you know like uh, what the status is you know you are you know we are a team I'm you know you're not like a lot not like allowed to get that information or this information it's all like transparent in that to help like get into the situation of being in a uh, a team that, you know, has uh, a short runway and we're always trying to, you know, get it uh, along. But, uh, uh, and of course, just to have like an, uh, like we would say like an open office, we're all together on the same floor. I don't have an office, mm. you know, mm. but it's all like, you can always talk to me, I I'm there. And uh, uh, we used to also have, CEO who like did like everything more to the book, but now we have like mm. uh, grown smaller because of the of the funding issue, <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so then we did it like on a regular basis, like uh, how are you feeling, you know, uh, today, and uh, is there something you know uh, we can do better and and, and stuff like that. Mm. 
So I would not mm. say that we have like a process here. It's more like being transparent and saying like I can always, you yeah, know, listen and also being like this kind of a, uh, yeah, not micromanage people, trust them mm. that they can mm. deliver what they are doing and also be like uh, flexible about where you work and almost, you know, when you work. We would like people to be in the office for a, you know, period of time, but, uh, mm. uh, but also be like, listen, okay, you need to be at home today or, you know, uh, yeah. you can, you know, I'm going, you're going to finish tonight or, you know, like whatever, because we have the data here. We can see, you know, clearly that you are delivering your hours, you know, mm. Yeah, you, you okay. don't that it is not a nine to five work and you can get the best idea when you're in a shower or or, 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 or somewhere else that you've been like tackling mm. for two days at work. So uh, it's kind of a, uh, yeah, when you are in a creative industry, uh, you have to tackle that, that, you know, sometimes a great idea can take, mm. you know, 10 minutes or, or two days or, or a bug in, a, uh, in development, you yeah, know, it's a, uh, Okay, so so what I'm hearing you say, and I'm just trying to summarize for the listener, what I'm hearing is you are maybe not addressing it directly, but I hear two to three things that you're doing specifically, and that is you've built a culture that supports an open communication in order for us or for you to uh, to catch things maybe early on and see if there's some changes need to be. So you have the culture that's supporting the mental well-being of the employees, even though their future might not be as secure as mm -hmm. if they would be working in a bigger studio. So that's the first one that I hear. The second one will be you give them a lot of autonomy and an autonomy gives them a sense of control over their own lives. And this is definitely something that supports their mental health. Mm -hmm. And then you're measuring on output and not necessarily on wor work hours done. And I think this is the, the number one thing that we can do to, um, to allow for a proper measurement of productivity, not just the hours spent in the office, but rather mm -hmm. what are we trying to achieve? And as you said, people have different velocities of working and, and it doesn't really matter how much time you spend on it. The, the delivered quality of work that you bring to the table is what should matter. And this gives this freedom that can allow for people to spend time at home and have a supportive network there or get after other habits that support their mental health in a way. So. I would actually say that you're doing a lot without noticing it in a way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so that's uh, that's yeah. really cool to hear, and I'm I'm very very impressed, and I I would really hope that maybe some people take note that are not doing it yet, and and, and following suit in a way. Mm -hmm. So let's explore crunch in the industry in general a little bit. Um, if we're looking at the industry. The, I've heard you say that things have changed a lot with uh, moving to a scrum model, but um, what what is your perspective on the industry today with uh, the increasing demands of meeting deadlines, but maybe also becoming a little bit more educated around how to manage the work hours and the workloads for individuals? How do you say the issue or the, the culture has morphed in a way to to accommodate and what are the issues today? So two questions. How have you seen things change to the better maybe? And the, the, the follow-up question is, um, what what is the current issue at hand, if there is one? Well, the in industry has changed from having this kind of a long deliveries into maybe like patching games and, and stuff like that. So it is, of course, you have this kind mm -hmm. of a big games that, you know, take two or three years to deliver, but uh, uh, there is this kind of a shorter loop that you see like uh, uh, that Scrum helps you with. So you have deliverables and you have like feedback on, on that. So uh, mm. from that, I think uh, uh, for a 12 weeks, you maybe crunch for a week and you deliver something. Uh, uh, from that point of view, I think that has changed from this kind of a long goal and then you get drained and, you know, up and down energy uh, during that uh, by always delivering some kind of a product in like two weeks time, even though it's just internal. So it helps mm. like the 
you know, mentally like, oh, yeah, yeah, achieve something. I'm showing something, you know, demo every mm. every two weeks and, you know, and, and, and stuff like that. Uh, so for that, I, I, I see change, at least uh, in my studio and in the industry here in Iceland. But then you, of course, are reading a lot of like, you know, after that came out, you know, we hadn't like eaten for three months or whatever. Uh, so I, I can see also for the people that have been working at the bigger studios that this there are still like a lot of crunch happening, but I, I, mm. I don't know that, you know, m that much. I haven't like read uh, a lot of studies on that, but mm. I, I, I read one time uh, when we have like crunch a lot in, in CCP and people are like, you know, is this doable or like a, there was this kind of a uh, area. It's like a, when you have enough money, you know, to have a, a house, a house or like rent a house or, or 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 you know and you know eat and do some maybe go to a movie or whatever like small um, money mm. after you know you paid all your bills and stuff like that and live for a month like okay then this kind of a crunch bonuses don't like work as much for you you would rather have the ownership and the ownership of the creativity that will drive mm. you to do more so the money mm. helps you for a period of time, but then it stops mm. helping you. So your productivity doesn't increase, mm. even though you're crunching for like, a, you know, like, for, for, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it helps yeah. like when you are young and you're still studying and you get out of your first job and you're like, wow, yeah, I can work like 24 hours a day. No problem. Uh, you know, we call it in Iceland, like sucking the blood out of the young ones. <laughs> we don't do it. No, no, just, yeah, yeah, no, it's like, a, it's kind of, I heard the truth. Or do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, we don't do it. I'm just saying, but uh, this is kind okay, of a okay. mentality like, a, ah, yeah, you're young and you can do whatever. You can work 16 hours a day. Yeah, so uh, probably uh, I think that is happening. Of course, in mm. the studios, they're hiring like interns and doing like, yeah, but uh, I don't have like, uh, any proof of, of or data on that to share. Yeah. Hmm. Absolutely love that you're uh, circling back around data all the time. It, it definitely <laughs> gives us a measurement. It definitely gives us a measurement that mm. um, that is some somehow validated and not just a intrinsic uh, value that we're projecting out there. Mm -hmm. As, as a final question to you, I would like to uh, maybe double click on your experience when in crunch, right? What, what was it like to you? What is your memory of it when you were crunching back at CCP? Uh, uh, for a period of time, it's like, uh, because the, the crunch was set like, okay, now are we crunching? And we, in like when I was in quality assurance, we didn't have enough to do to like, you know, like we were getting paid for crunching and I needed the money and I didn't have enough mm. to do. So uh, that was a totally mm. different like value into like the company was not like optimizing their crunch, you know, as well. Oh. Yeah, I, I experienced <laughs> that. So oh, that was yeah, like, I see. I, uh, but I loved like when we had like a, a, a enough to do for a period of time, but when uh, it happened like, again, we should, you know, do something. I was like, I don't want to participate, you know, so mm -hmm. it was optional to participate as well. So, uh, okay. it, yeah, so, uh, um, yeah, I just, and then, you know, in the end, they, you know, stopped doing it as well, but, uh, it's, it's this kind of, a. so for me, it didn't impact that period because I was at that time in life. But today I would, you know, not do it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, okay. yeah. So yeah. I would not say it like definitely... I don't have like a bad experience about it. I don't have. I have like a, you know, mm. this kind of a fun. Yeah, yeah. You know, what we're doing together. Everybody's like pumped up and, uh, mm. you know, it's in like a way. And, uh, everybody <laughs> was a similar age as well. So uh, some had kids and uh, they were like their kids were like, when do I see you? You know. So uh, so that had an yeah. impact on people that had families. But we were all like most, mm. you know. 30s and younger so uh, this is kind of a energy that is not that bad in a way but when because you are but we were not like a big company like uh, 300 people or whatever it was like 30 40 people so uh, i i admit admit when you're getting demand uh from somebody like two layers above you say like now now mm. you have to work over christmas and you can't say mm. anything or you will lose your job you yeah, know i think that that never happened to me you yeah, know it's uh 
it's a hmm. it was never like a demanded in a way so i would not say it has i think people a lot of people have more you know worse story to tell than me you yeah, know so yeah hmm. asymmetric uh, power distribution of, of individuals that have that experience but i guess for you the the experience was more frustration because you wanted to work and you would get paid for it but they're not yeah. ready to actually put you on workload that makes yeah. sense to do okay cool well maria it's been a blast to have you on thank you so much for your time uh if you would want it, there's here's the time for you to share with the people whatever you want to say and then also to mention where they can find you if they would get in touch or if they would want to work at parity uh yes thank you as well for having me that's been really great <laughs> to share my story <laughs> hopefully it would you know help help somebody uh yeah we are situated in, in iceland and we're building the game island to wins so we are island mm. and we are also mm. like uh getting really close to a launch so you know go to steam Exciting. and wishlist us there because uh, we really need your click you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but ever you know we have a really open office and if you are in iceland uh just uh, ping me or uh, send us an email on party at party.is and uh, you can visit our office and uh, we can tell you about our game or even tell you about you know what great things to do in iceland there yeah, yeah. amazing Great. I will definitely pop in when I visit. Yeah, I've do that. I've been wanting to go for yeah. a long time, so I will come in for sure. Mm -hmm. All right. All the best. And uh, for you listening out there, I'm excited to hear you back on the next one. Have a good one, everyone.